In this video, we're going to give you a quick overview of the newest version of the Raptor, the Raptor HK. Uh, the Raptor HK is a weapon-enabled uh, version of the uh, chopper. Um, it sports uh, eight hard points and a auto cannon uh, located in the front that is most controllable. Uh, the hard points, the way they work, is that you can mount any sort of missiles that you want. Um, you can also mount as well fuel tanks. Fuel tanks can be mounted on the two inside pylons. And what it will do is that uh, it will uh, scan all of the munitions that are mounted on the hard points, uh, group them by family, laser guided missile, radar guided missile, and then um, it will, uh, when you go to fire, it will start cycling through those items within the uh, in that specific family. Um, so from the outside controls, the canopy doors open automatically if there's no one in the pilot seat. If there is someone in the pilot seat and you want to open the doors, there is a force button. You can gauge this button here. This other button here is a ground anchor system. Ground anchor deploys two magols that rotate down, attach to the deck. This is useful if you're on a pitching ship and you want to attach it so it doesn't move around. Take off the ground anchors and uh, let's get started. Pilot. We're in the seat. Canopy doors automatically close. Quick overview of all the, the buttons and the systems here. Uh, engine controls are here in the front. The power on the engines, you would click this switch. And you can cycle between three different modes. It's idle mode, flight mode, and overdrive. Idle is for typically ground operations. Um, this is for charging the battery. Flight mode is for um, low-powered flight. Typically, if you're loitering in a location that uses lesser fuel, and overdrive is where you're typically be using it for um, fast moving uh, maneuverability. It's about 55 to 60 meters per second under overdrive. We'll turn that on afterwards. Um, this button here and this in the back section here, this is a rotor brake. When you turn off the engine and the rotors are still rotating, you can click and hold this button and it'll bring the rotors to a complete stop. These are your light controls. You have your external nav lights, uh, external forward spotlights and landing lights. Then you have your internal lights here. Turn on your internal light, turns on to white. You can switch it to red for low light mode. And then you can also adjust the brightness of the lights using these buttons here, up and down. Back here, if there's alerts, you can silence the alerts, the beeping. They'll still like notifications in the panel, like for uh, resource uh, alerts, etc. Uh, but this will uh, turn off the audible alerts. And this here is if you have fuel tanks attached in the inner pylons, you can hit this button and it will jettison the pylon, uh, jettison those fuel tanks. Heat control, uh, pressing this button will uh, maintain heat at an active temperature of 20 degrees. Um, on your right hand side, these are the GPS location points that you would enter in for the uh, autopilot. So uh, I have two targets are kind of out here right now. I have a helicopter here and a uh, tank here. I'm just going to put an autopilot point here. Set it. You need to set two points to it. You need to set the GPS, and then you would typically set the altitude. I'm going to set that for 100 meters. There is radio controls here in the front. Turn on the radio here. It is, operates in both single and dual channel. Single channel is it sends and receives on the exact same channel. Dual channel, you can alternate the channel for send and receive. Uh, right now, for example, if I was to set send and receive into the same one, it's looked at. It's receiving. There's a signal strength there. Turn this off. Um, these are your. This is your resource panel. This indicates your battery uh, power. This is your fuel tank and port tank and the starboard tank. Uh, they're in the backs. There's two tanks on the uh, on the back side of the uh, the Raptor, kind of just uh, on either near the wings. Um, as well as if you do attach the uh, fuel tanks, this should automatically adjust the fuel tanks that uh, that I created. I'll probably be posting those to a workshop, uh, and that will automatically adjust your numbers here. Um, this is for the weapons control. Um, in order to arm the gun, you would press this, uh, click the switch here. The gun ammo counter is here. Um, then what happens is when it's on, when it's uh, turned on, the uh, gun will st will work against your mouse view. I typically turn it off on the ground because I don't want it moving around. Uh, this is for arming your hard points. So uh, right now, you notice this is your hard point list here. It's indicating that the current family we're selected right now is laser-guided missile. If I want to switch the group of family that I want to deal with, 
press the number 2 key, it goes and does a search and it finds that we have four radar guarded missiles that are available in the hardpoint selection. It's currently disabled. If I click this switch, it'll turn it to green. The number of miss of ordnance in that family that are in, that it detects is identified here and also here. I'm just going to turn that off for right now just to make sure we don't fire anything off inappropriately. Uh, controls for your landing gear. This is retracting. Track. This is for extending and retracting. Uh, this is your parking brake. Uh, these are the controls for turning on autopilot and altitude hold. When altitude hold is on, the way you adjust it is that you would use your collective controls. Uh, when mouse mode is turned on, collective controls are W and S. When mouse mode is off, your collective controls are your up and down arrow keys. The uh, selected altitude that you want to hold at is automatically set when you turn it on. And if you want to adjust that up and down, use your collective. Um, in the HUD, there's some status bars. Uh, the status bars reflect kind of the uh, the status of various systems. This would be like autopilot turned on, altitude hold. This indicates that hover mode is turned on. This indicates that mouse mode is active. This is a resource alert, which is a, also goes with this. And this RD one here identifies that uh, radar is tracking something is trying to uh, to find you. There are a total of uh, three MFDs. There's uh, two smaller MFDs on either side of the cockpit. Uh, to cycle those, you would press this button here. Right now, this is an engine. You hit it again. This goes to Kremlin's fuel um, estimator. Click it again, and this is where you can do beacon. You can do a beacon locate, where it's looking for a beacon. And you can also do a beacon transmit. If you run into a problem, this is what you'd be activating. Cycle that back. On this side here, you have your radio a clock, and then this is a downward facing camera, which is useful for landing. In terms of the main FDs, you got uh, Bono's moving map. You click to move it around. Reset. When autopilot is on, it will provide some useful information here in terms of how many degrees you are off of the, uh, where you, what it needs to be, and then the range. Uh, the next one is, this is for on the bottom, there is a gimbal camera. That gimbal camera is also used for your laser designator. Uh, the laser designator uh, comes into play for your um, laser guided missiles. So you could turn on the laser here. The triangle, you, you, it's an infrared, so you put this on the target. And uh, once it locks, it'll identify a lock that indicates that the laser head is, is seeing something, then you can fire. You've got your standard stuff like track, stabilized infrared. This is for moving the camera left and right, up and down, and zooming in and zooming out. We'll cover that a little bit more once we start to we fire off a, a laser missile. Next one is a radar. The radar, you can control the range. This is used the older deprecated radar. I prefer this one here because you can get information such as the size of a signal strength as well as it does a better job of picking up uh, 360 degree targets. Um, the way the coloration works on the thing is that um, the signal strength identifies the brightness of the color. So an object such as a box, etc., or a cargo may be a little bit lighter yellow. A darker yellow will indicate that it is a some sort of target that it's picking up. Um, the deprecation, the single strength numbers have changed slightly since the new radar came in. Um, I'm typically finding that a like a, a small truck is about 40, something larger maybe 80 to 100. It's a little bit different, so um, it'll adjust the colors on these. Um, you can there's a item down here you can adjust the signal strength. Uh, this defaults to 10 um, in terms of the single strength, but if you if you're finding up picking up boxes, you don't want to pick up boxes. You want to pick up something that's only vehicles. So you can adjust this number here. It's a bit free form. So it appears that there's something that's identifying at a vehicle level. Slightly off to the left, that has a signal strength greater than 30. Oh, it's gone now. Adjust the range. Uh, that's the pause button. It'll pause and leave all the tracks on. So that's the radar. Next is, this is environment control. This is environment view, so this gives you wind speed, rain condition, temperatures. Uh, the wind speed is calc takes into a, account your your speed as well and your direction. 
Next is, this is an alternate flare control panel. Um, there are shaft dispensers on the Raptor. You, the shaft dispenser, is you click number one to dispense shaft. But there's some alternate flares that you can engage. There's a white alum that's rear point, pointing, red alums that are pointing forward, white shoots that shoot up. I think they're back, yeah, they're on top of the tail. And white smoke that shoots down. In order to uh, send out those alternate flares, click on it. Click here on the screen and it will fire off that specific flare. Last screen is the gun screen. Uh, this is the gun camera. Um, the gun will basically, you'll, we'll, we'll demonstrate this a little bit more later on, will point wherever the mouse is pointing. But there may be a situation where you can't see below you because I mean, all of this is in the way. So this was a, a gun camera that's been, that allows you to see slightly below you. You can also zoom in with the gun camera, reset, and also use infrared. So this is useful for those targets that are you're above and below you. Ammo count. Um, the ammo count, ammo is provided by two containers on the opposite side of the gun. The way it does the count is it counts what's in the container, it counts what's loaded, it counts what's in the feed, um, the, the feed devices, and that is where you come up with that final number. So it does not reflect what's in the containers only, it reflects what's truly available to the gun. Let's go to map. Uh, another number pad, this number pad, this is the FLIR laser frequency. This identifies the frequency that the laser is working at on the gimbal camera. And this will also populate to the hard point. So your missiles will then get the same um, frequency. Um, so if you want to change the frequency that you want to uh, target and your missiles to, uh, to, to, to home in on, adjust it here. So that covers the uh, kind of the operations here in the HUD. Um, you have, you can turn on night vision. This is all your status. Uh, this here reflects the um, condition that you've set for the pusher motor, the throttle. Pusher motor is a, um, there's a, a fan that's located inside that pushes forward. So it gives you propulsion forward. Uh, you can adjust that using the three and four keys for up for th uh, to increase the throttle for th using three and down for four. This general is your speed in meters per second. This is your altitude in meters. This is your ordinance, what's currently in the hard point. Um, the gun, when you enable the gun, it'll come up here too as well. But you typically use it on the ground. You kind of, you could be pushing the Raptor around. Also, the gun count is reflected here. Parking brakes on. Gears on. Uh, there would be AP information when it comes uh, when AP is engaged, and then you have your compass right here. If you want to turn off the HUD, there. Turn off the MFDs, that switch. So that's all everything in the eternal. So uh, let's get flying. Get flying. We want to turn the engine on. Turn the engine on. It's idle. The engine is starting to spin. Uh, we can use idle to uh, to get out of the hangar. You, know, you can do one of two ways to get out of the hangar. Is if we turn off the parking brake, we can kind of pitch forward. It gives us kind of enough power to slowly move out. Uh, you get more push power. Um, more power typically when you under flight mode um, or you can use the pusher motor we put the pusher motor up and then we'll just kind of roll out so we're just under idle it's not enough to get us to take off but it's enough to kind of get us around so we've cleared the hangar let's push the uh, pusher motor down turn on the parking brake we're out and we're ready to start flying so let's turn on some systems. We'll turn on our external navigation, lights, standard flashers, uh, spotlights. You have two landing lights going down and uh, one on the gun camera. We don't really need that. Heat is turned on. Um, I'm not going to turn on this weapon systems yet, but uh, controls. We are now currently in keyboard control. So uh, keyboard controls, collective, is up and down arrow keys. So let's get us into out of idle, and we're going to get us into uh, flight mode. And in flight mode, it's going to get the turn the RPS up. It's going to give us enough power to uh, start moving the start flying the helicopter. So up key is collective up. I'm going to retract the brakes. Collective down is the down key. 
roll left is D, roll right, sorry, roll left is A, roll right is D, pitch forward is W, pitch back is S. Uh, to yaw left is the arrow key left, yaw right, arrow key right. Mouse mode, gauge mouse mode, press button number five. And mouse mode, pitch is where you're looking. Yaw is where you're looking. Collective is now moved from the arrow keys to W and S. Roll is still A and D. I'm going to take us out of mouse mode. And I'm going to dial us up to overdrive. We are in hover mode. Hover mode basically is auto hover. You want to turn auto hover off. Press button number six. It's now kind of in free flight. It goes wherever it's point. Turn hover back on. Uh, you'll notice when you kick in the pusher motor in three that hover mode is turned off. It will flash, indicating that when the pusher motor comes back online, um, it will bring you to an auto hover. So well, let's do some basic maneuvers. We're all ready to go. Turning the pusher motor on. Going forward, we're in mouse mode. Radar is picking up that we're getting a contact from someplace. I'm just using right now the uh, keyboard for flying. So a uh, keyboard, I'm rolling into a turn. I'm typically pulling back, that assists. And also then yawing. I'm using the collective keys, which are the arrow keys. But uh, the, the most best control I typically find is when you're using mouse mode. So I'm going to turn on mouse mode, hitting button number five, and let's start putting it through its bases a bit. When the pusher motor is turned on full, you'll typically find that the Raptor will operate something similar to a plane. Uh, wherever you kind of point the nose is typically where it's going to go. The best way for turning you typically find is roll into, like an aircraft, roll into where you want to go and then you can use the collective to kind of pull you up, which is going to be a turn then, and then use your yaws basically to adjust your levels. So in terms of target, I have put an older version of the Raptor out here in helicopter mode, which you can use that, I'm going to use that for radar. And then I'm going to use this tank, uh, I think it's from Nuquay. I think didn't pronounce it. That's in here to uh, demonstrate the laser guided. I'm going to notice that hover mode is. I think I'm going to bring I turn off the uh, and hover mode will kick in. Mouse controls. I'm going to turn off hover, and we're just going to fly kind of your standard way. We'll kind of be pitching a little bit slower, but you typically find that you might have a little bit more precision in terms of uh, being able to move around in kind of tighter spaces. All right. So it covers off some basic flight operations. Turn on hover again, turn off mouse, let's start looking at the weapons. I'm going to turn off for... Uh, there we go. So let's start off with the, uh, the gun first. Turn on the gun. Gun is now armed. I'm going to go into the gun view. What you'll notice now is wherever I'm pointing, the gun is going to be going. So um, when it's outside of the window, so it should be hitting there if I turn it aiming at that location. It takes a bit of time for it to come around. And notice that now we are aiming kind of below us. We're out of view. The mouse is kind of captured. So it is aiming for kind of those general areas. So uh, let's zoom in. Let's say, for example, I wanted to target that one tower. It's, it's there. So. Ammo count reflected here and also reflected there. Covers off the gun. Disable the gun. 
gun is disabled, it starts pointing forward. Now let's arm our hard points. Currently, right now, we are in radar guided missiles. Radar guided missiles um, has a tracking head which points forward. Uh, there is a predictive kind of radar um, in the thing which will also which will generally tell us what the tracker head is going to try to track in on. So right now with radar guided missiles, let's try to track in on that Raptor, which is about uh, 0.6 kilometers away. I'm going to go and uh, fly typically how we would for anti-air. It'll typically be on the move. Put us into mouse mode. And I'm going to amp line up for a shot and radar guided missile as if we're dogfighting. This is capable of dogfighting the uh, NPC jets. Uh, the radars are all aspect, which means you can use them in both uh, ground and air. So we're going to come around. We have there, general lock, so if I fire, there goes the missile. Boom. Hits. Uh, warheads, unfortunately, it looks like they were... Um, nerfed in the last update, so uh, beforehand it used to be able to take targets in a single shot, hopefully that will be corrected. Uh, we do also have a target down here on the ground, uh, but you'll find though is with uh, radar is that it may not beat in on exactly uh, what you're aiming, I mean, it might actually track into a different target. So that is where the laser guided missiles, which are going to be the next thing we're going to cover off, is useful. It's kind of like the pilot scalpel. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to turn off the pusher motor, which is going to bring us into a hover. Turn off uh, mouse mode is currently active. I'm going to turn off mouse mode. So we're strictly in hover right now. And I'm going to turn on altitude hold. Altitude hold is set to 167. Uh, we can go down slightly, so I'll use the collective to adjust that. And now we're going to start working with the laser. The laser designator is, comes from the gimbal camera. So we'll switch to the gimbal camera. There it is there. Controls are up, down. Zoom in. So let's zoom in. So as you, you would typically use the gimbal camera, let's lock in on the target. So I'm going to put tracking mode on. There's our target around there. There it is. I'm going to turn on the laser. This is an infrared laser. The frequency is set to zero. If I want to change the frequency, I can change it here. Oh, I hit the... Ah, ah I did something. That's the, the joys of basically... I mean, it's, well, you know, the, the lock worked. And it actually did track in on the target. Or, or maybe it didn't because I changed the frequency. Okay, now frequency is at 123. I have two laser-guided missiles left. Those ones did not track in because I changed the frequency in the laser after it had left, and so it didn't track in on the laser. So right now the laser head is at 123. Um, the heads are engaged to the track in on 123. I have this targeted tracked. Let's fire, and we should be able to see. It's going in, we have in, and boom, hit on target. What the lock identifies um, is that uh, it means that the laser head is actually seeing the laser from the gimbal camera. If I was to skew over, I'll lose lock. Reason being is that the uh, missile can't see it. So if I track it back, there, lock is back. A missile is able to see it. What I do is let's, uh, let's bring the, this back up in. We got a lock. Laser missiles work out to a range of over two kilometers, so they are useful. I mean, the, the only problem is that the game will not do well at, um, I mean, the, popping the targets. The targets won't become available until under two, and I'm finding with the new system, the two as well, the new update, um, explosions on missiles be inside, outside of 900 meters when they're fired for some reason. I you mean, know, you're not getting the same damage, so I think there's something that's a bug in the both the, the radar and also in the, the warhead system where they are not operating where they waited prior to the update, which was fantastic. Single hit, 
target would have been obliterated even up to two kilometers. So right now uh, you know, we've, got, we've used all of our laser guided missiles. It's automatically cycled to the next family which is radar guided missiles. So for example if I was to track in here now and fire radar guided missiles I'm expecting that I mean it's identified that there is a targets that are there. I'm going to turn off uh, Let's go in turn on mouse mode. If I'm going to try to fire at that, hopefully the radar will go in on it. And I was lucky in this case that it went and it hit. But in some cases where there's a lot of target and debris and crap around, like cargo containers, you may not get that same kind of uh, luck. In our case, where there's uh, not many targets in the area, for example, I'm going to fire in on the helicopter again. Tracking in. This is actually, it's a pretty maneuverable uh, missile that will actually do well against jets. We have a successful hit and enough damage that it's forced the uh, helicopter down. Okay, so I'm going to bring this thing in now for a landing. So I'm just going to uh, turn off mouse mode temporarily. So I can turn off my weapons. I don't need that. I'm just going to go over. Let's clear up as much crap as possible. And I'm flying currently right now with keyboard. Let's fly back. I'm going to start cycling down the pusher motor. Don't really need the power. It's going into hover. <clears throat> Start bringing down the collective. Extend the landing gear. I can switch it to. We'll switch it to flight mode. And let's start bringing it in. Uh, maybe just do do a quick illustration. We'll just give you an example. These are that's the camera under that's underneath. Actually, one thing I should show, maybe the autopilot system. So let's actually bring this out again. So the way the autopilot works is I've designated an autopilot location, which is back here, 543 meters away, with destination altitude of 100 meters. Engage it. Click this button. Raptor will automatically turn. We're in autopilot mode. The altitude that it's going to set is going to path to that eventual 100 meters, so it's going to progressively go to 100 meters. So don't need to do anything once it gets to the location. Hover will turn on. Let's go back to the map. AP information indicates this is the kind of the direction we're off by degrees and the range. So once it gets to within, uh, I think it's about 10 meters, they would automatically turn in and go, turn off and go to hover mode with altitude hold on. Now, let's use it alternately to return. From my understanding this is roughly about uh, 28 meters. So I'm going to set a waypoint here. And I'm going to set this just to be safe to uh, 35. Okay then. Gear is on. Transitioning at full power to the zone, it'll start dialing back the pusher motor, throw the pusher motor into reverse temporarily to bring it to help bring it to a stop. And bring us in at roughly 35 meters at the waypoint. All to do it hold is kicked in. So let's bring it in for a landing. So I'm going to turn off, uh, I can leave altitude hold on, but I'm going to do this freeform. I'm going to turn off altitude hold. And we're going to bring it in to the hangar. I can use a bit of the pusher motor, but sometimes it's better. I mean, it's a little bit more better control when it's, uh, when it's off, when you're doing precision. But you can use it for like a, some small stuff.
Raptor is a, a pretty good control. And we're down. Now that we're down, let's put the motor into idle. We can shut it off. Engine is now off. We can use the rotor brake. Using the rotor brake brings the rotors to a complete stop. Let's turn off nav lights. Don't need heat anymore. Um, our weapons are all disabled. We can turn off our HUD. We can turn off the MFDs. Get out. Um, there are some breakers in the back. Support breaker is for uh, that'll power on some various systems here. But typically, you may want to save some power on your ground. You can turn off the drive system. Drive systems for controlling the jets and some of the maneuvering um, uh, the power that goes to like, the maneuvering uh, planes, etc. Like there. Uh, Kicking the ground anchor, and we're attached to the deck. So that's been an overview of the Rafter HK. Um, I hope you enjoy it. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post those in the Steam Workshop. And I'll see if I can get back to you. Take care.